In this lesson, we'll begin delving into Maya's graph editor. The graph editor is what you'd use to polish your animations. Simply because it gives us full control, we can edit what are called function curves that show us how our keyframes transition through time. And as we start to tweak them, you'll notice that it will start to change the way the animation plays. So what we'll do is go ahead and have a look at the graph editor. I actually have some animation in this scene. I'll go ahead and hit play. You can see little Rexy here kind of hops in and then he gets distracted by this weird looking tree. So let's say we go ahead and take a look at the keyframes and function curves that make up this animation. I'll go to the show menu and show NURBS curves and then from there we can go ahead and grab let's say his center of gravity control. With that selected we can then go to window and then we can move down to animation editors and there it is right at the top graph editor. Sweet let me go ahead and pull this over. Now where are our keys? And where are those function curves? Well if you don't see anything in the work area just go ahead and press the F key to frame in and there they are. Fantastic. You could also press the A key to view all of your selected function curves. So in this case, since I have the object that has the animation selected, you'll notice you'll see all keyframes. But if I were to go ahead and just pinpoint, let's say, one channel, you can go ahead and now press the A key, and you can see how we're able to zoom in to that one channel that we have selected. So I find that to be super helpful. A lot of times you want to zoom in close to your function curves, just to kind of figure out what type of changes that are actually occurring because if you're back a bit too far it might look like well it's not that much of a change that has happened but you'll notice that as you start to get closer to the function curve then you start to realize that hey well I have to actually go ahead and modify this section of the animation because I don't quite like the timing here so I might have to make a really subtle change to fix the timing to my liking so again, we have a lot of control over deciding how the animation will turn out from the graph editor. Now, let's go ahead and bring our attention over to the left. What we have are, again, our animated channels. And what's nice is that we could actually pin these down. So if we, let's say, wanted to focus on the translate Z channel of the selected control, the center of gravity, and then if we wanted to, let's say, switch our selection to focus on the head control, take a look. The center of gravity's z-axis will still remain pinned. So again, super convenient. Of course, once we close out of the graph editor, we'll lose that pin. I'll go ahead and open back up. There you go. So you can see, no longer do we see that same z-translation channel. So that's a look at the graph editor. Now let's say we go ahead and learn how to navigate it the same way we would navigate in our viewport, only we cannot orbit. But we can go ahead and pan by holding down Alt and dragging with the middle mouse button. If we were to drag with the right mouse button while holding Alt, we can zoom in or out. Now let me go ahead and show you something really helpful. This is known as interactive zooming. If we were to hold down Shift and Alt, we can then go ahead and drag with the right mouse button either vertically to stretch our view in that direction or we can drag left and right to stretch our view horizontally. This is a great way to zoom in close to our function curves to get an idea of what is actually happening. Sometimes you might notice a small kink that you're trying to figure out where it's coming from. Well, what you can do is go ahead and work with the interactive zoom to figure out where the problem is occurring and then you can at that point either add a keyframe or perhaps adjust your tangency to fix that issue. So interactive zooming, super helpful. Now, if we were to go ahead and select one of our keyframes, you'll notice that we have tangents connected to them. This is super cool because we can start to use these tangents to edit our animation without having to add any extra keys. What I'd like to do is block in my work, and then at that point, I'll go in and start to use tangents to see how far I can get without adding any extra keys. Sometimes it's necessary because you can't quite get the pose that you want with a tangent. But how can we start to move this around? Well, with the key selected, we can grab our move tool. 
So I'll just go ahead and press the W key. And then from there, take a look. We can use the middle mouse button to move this key's position. Let me go ahead and undo this back. If we were to go ahead and hold down Shift and drag vertically, we have locked our movement to only move in that direction. If we drag left and right while holding down Shift, again, we've locked our movement so we can only move left or right. This can be super helpful because sometimes you may want to only retime a key. If that's the case, you could just go ahead and hold down Shift and drag left and right. And that's going to change the key's timing. If you want to change the key's value, well, at that point, you'd again hold down Shift and drag up or down. Let's go ahead and have a look at something. What I'll do is go ahead and grab the center of gravity control and we'll go to the translate Y channel. From there, I'll press the F key. All right, sweet. So we have this key we can work with on frame 20. I'll go ahead and hold down shift and start to drag up and you can see how that's starting to change the position of Rexy. Cool. So now you can see that it's going to come up a little bit higher there. That gives us a fun bounce. We could also go ahead and take the key on frame 23 and do the same thing, kind of bring it up just a little bit higher. And now he has a more exaggerated bounce. Oh, cool. So this is how we can start to modify our keyframes. We can now drag our tangents by selecting one half of our tangent T after the key has been selected, and we can now middle mouse button drag. So let's go ahead and do a little test here, just so you can see how useful this can be. I'll go to a moment where Rexy is in his down position. Let's go ahead and take this keyframe on frame 29. We can go ahead and grab the tangency. And what we'll do is go ahead and drop that so that he moves down a little bit lower after frame 29 or 28 or so. So you'll notice that he's going to move down a little bit lower after that frame. Oh, cool. Now, if we were to go ahead and move to frame 29 and start to adjust the tangency, Right here in 28, you can see how that will start to change the pose. So again, we can start to modify our poses without having to add any extra keys because the problem is if we add too many keys, that will start to clutter up our work and it's very difficult to edit animation and add polish if that is the case. So be really careful about that. I'm going to go ahead and end the lesson here. In the next lesson, I'd like to show you a few really cool tools we can use to edit our keyframes in the graph editor.